My deal was up at Warner Brothers in 1995. It was about six months out, and I got a call from my friend Bill Haber, who was an agent at CAA, you know, and probably the most powerful television agent in town at the time. And he said, Larry Tish would like to meet you. He's never met you. So I said, okay. So the next time I was in New York, which was a few weeks later, Bill and I went over and had lunch with Larry Tish. A very pleasant lunch, and he talked, you know, and CBS was, was really struggling. They, they had had a, a, you know, Sagansky had left a couple of years earlier, and, and they were really having a rough time. And their, their fortune did not look good for the future. Um, they had shows that were skewing very old. They had Walker, Texas Ranger, Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, Murder, She Wrote. Those were the big hits, you know, and they were all aging shows, you know. Um, Murphy Brown was in its la on its last legs. I think it lasted another year. The Nanny was on. Uh, 60 Minutes was successful, but not a lot. And all these shows had seen their better days. You know, they were, they were on the decline. Um, the only one that was on the way up and, and which we helped a little bit was Touched by an Angel, which was then on Saturday. So they were in dire straits. He Let's starts talk talking to me about programming, you know, and, you know, he was very complimentary. I understand you're the guy that changed the fortunes at NBC. You know, I mean, putting ER and Friends on in one year was a pretty good calling card. You know, I, I got a pretty good reputation for that. Also, at that point in time, Warner Brothers had 22 series on the air, and our nearest competitor had 10 or 11. So, you know, and there, there were a number of other things. All the Miller Boyette stuff were, were still fairly active, and Lois and Clark was there, and Sisters were there, and there was a lot of good activity. Very little, ironically, with CBS, except for Murphy Brown, which went on the air before I even went there. So I had nothing to do with that transaction. So. He, he sort of kicked around, well, what would I do? And I said, well, you know, that would cost you a lot of money, Larry, to, to tell, tell you what I would do. You know, anyway, we had a terrific relationship. Um, he called a few more times, you know, to just keep up the relationship. And, and uh, it was, I guess it started, the lunch was, the first lunch was probably in January, uh, culminating in, I want you to come over here you know, and run, run the entertainment division. And my attorney and I flew to New York City on a Sunday. We flew in on a Saturday and we, we met with Larry and his uh, CFO on a, a Sunday afternoon. Closed up the deal, it was a very generous deal, package. Um, and we flew back to LA. And once again, I had to deal with, now I, at this point in time, so this is now April. My contract's not up till September. So I have to deal with Bob Daly again on a contract issue, you know? And, you know, once again, I was very close to him at this point. And, you know, I went over to see him and I said, I've been offered this job. And by the way, ironically, it was the job that he used to have. He's president of CBS Entertainment. I said, you went from CBS to Warner Brothers. I want to go from Warner Brothers to CBS. And the first day, Bob was genuinely excited for me. Then the next day, he was pissed off, you know? Now, as I said, he, he was, he, he's a great boss and a, a wonderful guy, but he, you know, he said, what am I going to do? You got all these shows. You know, I said, Bob, I've left you in great shape. You know, you have, a, you have a terrific team here. This is a great opportunity, blah, blah, blah. There's really no room here for me to grow. You got you and Terry Semmel. You run the best studio in town. You got Barry Meyer. There's no place for me to go. You know, I've really, and you know what, to put on another three shows here is not going to excite me. I already have the top two shows in television or whatever you are and friends were at that time. Um, you know, I've already done it. And you, there, there's, so there was a couple of months of, you know, going back and forth. Um, the irony was, so I had to keep it quiet for a couple of months because there was an upfront coming up in May. So I sat through the upfront and I knew I was inheriting this schedule. I sat at the upfront presentation and knew we were in trouble and knew it was going to be a hard year. I think they put on 11 new shows. I don't think 10 of them made it out of the year and the second one 
the, the one that lasted only, it lasted for 13 episodes more. It was the year of Central Park West. It was, they were trying to get young, but they were trying to get young like a kamikaze. In other words, you don't just get young people by picking them out of the air. You have to gradually take your audience and move them down, which was my philosophy. So anyway, we had to basically keep it quiet, and I had to sit there during the upfront and realize what, what I handled. By the way, nobody knew I was leaving yet because it didn't get resolved until basically June was when it was announced, you know. And I was still at Warner Brothers, and I actually didn't start at CBS until I think it was like July 10th of that year. 